The reputation of Walter Benjamin has only grown in the decades since his death at the beginning of World War II. The story about his dramatic ending can be found elsewhere, and so I won't recount it here. It is difficult to summarize what Benjamin's work involved. Suffice it to say that Benjamin was not heralded during his lifetime as a great philosopher or literary critic, or whatever label one may put on him. His interest moves back and forth with equal facility from philosophy to literature to Marxian economics to pop culture and back again, and his restless critical imagination never quite settled on any one thing. In pre-war German academia, as for post-war German academia, this sort of thing doesn't lend itself to professional advancement. On top of that, he was an unabashed Marxist and also a Jew, which no doubt further complicated any professional ambitions he might have had. Failing to secure a permanent teaching position in Germany, he nevertheless cultivated a number of relationships with other people, including Antonin Artaud and Hannah Arendt, who talked up his work after the war, and also saw it into print. In addition to the work of art in the age of mechanical reproduction, among his many other famous works was the notorious Arcades Project, a voluminous pile of fragments which remained a legend until their publication in the 1980s. This was to have been nothing less than a mapping out of the genesis of the modern world, beginning in the Paris of the 1840s. As for why Benjamin chose this particular epoch, he reckoned the confluence of bourgeois social life and the chaotic flow of capital found its perfect embodiment in the culture of the Parisian arcades. To explain a little bit about what they were, briefly, by the 1840s it had been several decades since the pre-industrial era of the late 18th century. In the Paris of Baudelaire, we have the manifestation of capitalism in the way that consumers know it now, with the establishment of the first large department stores with massive quantities of fixed-price goods, the idea of shopping as culture took root. Benjamin spends some time in the Arcades Project talking about the example of Le Bon Marché, known as the first prominent department store. The Bon Marché model, and by the way, it still exists, Follow the pattern we are familiar with from the modern-day Walmart. Large quantities of goods that could be bought at volume, and the savings then passed on to the consumer, who could shop for everything in one location. But while traveling to these larger stores, one passed through the arcades stuffed with little shops surrounding them. Benjamin located the riotous nature of capitalist culture in these kiosks, with a small shop selling usually one type of good, umbrellas, hats, jewelry, which were themselves each operated by an individual vendor. They grew like coral reefs on the gangways between the larger buildings and the more well-heeled merchants in the shopping districts. In time, these arcades, as they were known, became more elaborate, evolving glass roofs, gas lighting, and elaborately paved sidewalks. In essence, this was the first shopping mall, not only in structure, but in purpose. One could loiter in the buzzing activity of consumer culture without buying anything. In other words, experiencing capitalism as entertainment. Benjamin's great work was never finished, and in its final form it remains a collection of notes. Extracts from Marx, Maxime Ducamp's massive work Paris, Ses organes, Ses fonctions et sa vie, Proust, Nietzsche, Rousseau, Apollinaire, and most of all, the poetry of Baudelaire. Indeed, the point of view expressed in the work comes closest to Baudelaire and the spirit of the central character of Le Fleur de Mal, that of the flaneur, the young man of leisure who has nothing better to do than to walk around and take in the pleasures of the city. Although Benjamin did not live to see the proper completion of this book, I personally feel as if the work in its present form is really enough. He left enough of a mind of brilliant material in order to point future readers in the right direction. What Benjamin sought to do with this work was to express the great complex factors of the 20th century that led to the iron grip of capitalism over culture as it completely remade the world of human relations and the relationships that people maintained with each other in urban spaces. It may be that there is nothing really more to be spelled out in this thesis but rather to direct the gaze of the reader to capital's pernicious and de 